Hi, welcome to this latest edition of the Virtual Bridge Sessions. And today we're joined uh, by Leslie Hamilton from the University of Glasgow, who have been using Blackboard now, uh, Blackboard Ally, officially for a week. Is that right, Leslie? A week, yeah, a week and a day? One week last Wednesday. One week last Wednesday. <laughs> okay. So here's the pure unfiltered view <laughs> of what Blackboard is really like and its potential going forward. So <laughs> over to you, Leslie. Right. So we should uh, everyone see that now. I'm now in presentation mode for the PowerPoint file. I basically kick off with just a few slides explaining what Blackboard Ally is and how we intend to be using it at the university. Okay. So last Wednesday, a Blackboard Ally was made visible to staff at the university. I, and basically this comes on the back of the university's digital accessibility guidance scope. And I think next week, Drew McConnell from the university will be uh, delivering on the digital accessibility guidance at the university. So I'm not going to, to say much about it, other than it is as you would expect it to be. Uh, it is guidance around the, the use of uh, structuring documents, using sufficient color contrast, adding alt text to images, a meaningful hyperlinks, etc. I so what is Blackboard Ally and why has the university I implemented it? Well, Blackboard Ally first developed by Blackboard, I and it is available in various I, modes. It's available for Blackboard Learn, of course. It's available for self-hosted Moodle, I servers. Canvas, D2L, Brightspace, and Open LMSs. But what it does is, as a Moodle plugin, it runs automatically and it provides accessibility guidance for staff. And it also provides the, uh, from a student's point of view, those resources, those educational resources in different alternative uh, digital formats. Institutionally, it provides different levels of reporting so during the, this talk we will have a we'll granularize things down into the the middle course site but there's individual a uh, accessibility guidance for specific learning resources i there's a course site a wide reporting but there's also institutional level reporting so what Blackboard Ally is doing is it's checking all the resources and activities on Moodle against the, the web content accessibility guidelines. So Blackboard Ally does have a published checklist, uh, but essentially, as we've, we've just said, it's checking all of the content on Moodle, uh, not just uh, file resources, but content within the, the Moodle activities as well. I, it's checking for logical heading structures, font sizes, sufficient contrast between text and background, that all images have alternative text available, I, tables have captions and column headers, I, hyperlink text is, des describes the target, for instance. I, but, uh, the information that Blackboard Ally gives us is not unlike the same information that we get. At Glasgow, we are a Microsoft Office institution, so all staff already have at their fingertips the ability to check documents prior to uploading them into, into Moodle uh, using the, the Microsoft Accessibility Checker. Uh, so the kind of things that are being checked by Microsoft are also being checked by Ally. In fact, the, the reporting of that is, is not dissimilar. So it's only been available to us uh, for a week and two days. I, and all I've been able to do in that time is just take a survey of our Moodle courses 
the ones that are running in semester one. And that involves 47 Moodle sites and the number of course items across those 47 Moodle sites is, well, runs to 12,248 uh, content types. And the good thing about Ally is, yes, we could use Microsoft Office Accessibility Checker when we're creating new documents, etc., before putting them on Moodle. But as you can see, already existing on Moodle across 47 Moodle sites, there is loads of content. And that, that content is not necessarily a meeting the accessibility guidelines. So Blackboard Ally will help us to a change, update, and content to ensure that we will be, hopefully in the near future, meeting those accessibility guidelines. From the staff point of view on Moodle, what you see is the resources. I Ally analyzes those resources against the accessibility guidelines and it provides you with a score. A, an ally uses the kind of a traffic light system to try and identify, give you a quick visual a clue as to how accessible your resource is. So red being a low score. So it's checking your file and it's giving it a score between not and 33%. And in practice, really, it's concluding that this particular file isn't accessible. A amber medium score, so your file is somewhere between 34 and 66%. And so it concludes that it's kind of some things in the file are accessible, some things are not accessible, but it's clear that it could be improved. Light green, I think, is probably where we're all heading to initially. I, so that means that the majority or much of the file is accessible, but there's still room for improvement. And of course, the dark green is a perfect score. So there's nothing else you could do with that resource I, to make it any more accessible. It is accessible. Blackboard Ally has its limitations, and these limitations we knew uh, before its implementation, and that the, when you think about Moodle and in so, uh, quite a number of our Moodle courses, uh, staff, teachers will organise PowerPoints into folders and into subfolders, and we knew that uh, going forward with Ally, I, Ally doesn't pick up those resources in subfolders within a folder. Uh, so we need to ask staff if they're considering the use of folders for structuring content to stick to one level of folder. And of course, albeit Ally allows you to download various different formats of the same resource, I, we should always remember as well that it doesn't matter what alternative format you download it is, it's still only as accessible as the original document. I, in regards to alt text, so we can have a lot of images on the Moodle site. I, we can add alt text to those images, but Ally doesn't judge the quality of that alt text. So that, that's a little bit of a, a limitation and you can see that being a little bit of a workaround from or some staff adopting a workaround in that regard. I, the other thing that it doesn't check is the reading order of documents I, and that's something that MS Office does do. So we've all run an accessibility check uh, in PowerPoint and of course we've all to go through our slides and check that the reading order is as it should be. Right, so <clears throat> looking at those 47 Moodle sites, I, how did we do as a school? I, well, I found that 15 of our courses are red, so they're low scoring courses. 24 are medium 
I seven is light green, so it's pretty obvious that there we have lots of room for improvement in terms of the content on our Moodle sites being made accessible. Graphically, it's it's you can see that the graph skews towards the left. In other words, it very much is sitting in the red amber zone of the accessibility scores. We've got nothing is perfect. I but we do have a few who are in the light green zone and hopefully we can use them as case studies to show those in the red and the amber how it should be done. How we compare against uh, average accessibility scores across the university, well, we seem to be sitting quite low. I, we received an email yesterday from the university telling us that I'm very pleased that their average score is sitting at 80% across the whole institution, which I thought was pretty amazing because even when you compare that against the, the European average scores when Ally is first implemented, it's ranging from 45 to 65%. So that's, yeah. Uh, interesting numbers and it will be interesting to see over the year how we can uh, improve our, our school score against the university score. The kind of things that are contributing to, to low scores are, are scanned documents, I, images not having descriptions, I, contrast issues, documents not having any headings, I, tables not having headers, etc. So the, the list can be quite extensive. One of the problems or a couple of the problems we've already seen this past week is that in Moodle we have an issue with orphaned files. I, these are the files that you've added to Moodle but since deleted I, and although they're not showing on the course page they're still in the file manager for the course. I, and that those files are being picked up by allies. So in actual fact, it could be that our, our low scores are the result of a orphaned files. The other thing is that our school tends to favor the grid layout in Moodle. I, and you may be aware of the grid layout, but when you, it's a set of tiles and you can add images to those tiles. I, but Moodle doesn't actually give you an option to add alternative text to those images. I, but Ally still sees those images, doesn't detect alternative text, and of course is, is adding that to your course score as well. Nice thing is though that Ally itself, and you'll see in a minute or two, is that we can actually use Ally to add alt text to the grid images. Uh, so that's quite nice. Right, before we have a look at Ally in practice, I, from the student's point of view, I, what students see, they don't see the scores against each of the resources, they only see one of the two Ally icons and that's the alternative format icon. I, so when the student clicks on the alternative format icon, they can choose which format of that resource they want to download. I, the, obviously, they're going to download which suits them uh, best. Now, the first time I, there's options in alternative formats like the audio option, so it can take some quite can take some time to for the system to create that alternative format for download, and it's only the first time a student requests the audio version that it will take that time. Once it's converted, uh, the, the converted file will stay for a limited amount of time on the Ally server uh, so that the next student to come along and request the audio version, it will download immediately. So it's, it's only when alternative formats are requested for the first time that there's that there might be a slight lag in time between the request and the download being available. Having said that, sometimes there are things on Moodle that staff will not want 
uh, students to have access to alternative formats. So when a member of staff or a teacher clicks on the alternative format icon, I, against the, the heading in the dialog box, there's a drop down I, arrow and that allows for individual resources staff to disable the alternative format option. Right, so we kind of, I'll move on to the live uh, Moodle site in a, in a second. Uh, but overall, what the accessibility of the course shows us is it gives us an overall course score and it organizes those, the content into those that are easy to fix content and those that are low scoring content. So we can very quickly make a difference to our overall course accessibility score. So when we first look at the, the course accessibility score, this is the top half of the screen. There is more to this image below the fold, but essentially we get the, the overall course score. I, we get a breakdown of all of the course content, and then we can see that there's, 50, in this case, 57 uh, easy fix issues, and most of them will be images, adding alt text to images, and we've got 193 items that are low scoring. So we can sort the content and quite efficiently in the workflow fix a lot of the images, uh, the issues. So let's switch to Moodle. Right, so I, I haven't asked permission from staff to, to use their Moodle site. So what I've done is I've brought in some uh, options from uh, various places to demonstrate uh, what Ally looks like on a Moodle site. So this is a, a list of resources and as you can see in the uh, from the teacher's point of view I, there are two icons you can see some are amber some are green. I, one is dark green so perfect I, but there is I, various content items. So we can, on the face of it, we can click this document and we can see straight away I, what the score for that document is, 43%. I, the interface actually identifies where the images sit. I, we can, they're marked, you can switch them on and off. And if there was more than one issue in this document, we can uh, scroll through those options. But over on the right hand side, it tells us that this document contains an image without a description. So from an educational point of view, we can see what that means, why we should add alt text, and if we don't know how to add alt text, there are links to how-tos. Okay. So we can use this option to download the document and then we can fix the document offline and then we can drag it back on to Blackboard Ally I, to update automatically on Moodle. There's also the option to view all issues in the document. So it's not just about the image, we can see that the document doesn't have the correct language set and also that the table doesn't contain headers as well. So that we can go through individual items on Moodle. I, this one I have left in because you can see it's got a perfect score. I, it's marked as decorative, but you can see that the image shouldn't be marked as decorative. So this is a workaround to tweak <laughs> your uh, score. I, but anyway, from the, the point of view of the course as a whole, over in the, the Moodle navigation, we've got an accessibility report. 
So that opens in a new tab. We've got an overall score. Uh, so this is unusual, as you saw from the data for the, the, the uh, 47 courses I looked at. I, but you can see I've got 61 items on the middle site, book chapters, images, and if I click the start to fix the easiest options, you can see here there we've got the grid item image. Don't have any alternative text for that, so I can add all text or I can click the mark as decorative option. And once that closes, that item off my list disappears. I, and I can keep going through all of the options. I am adding alt text as needed. I, I'll just, for quickness, leave that as decorative. So the other thing on the site is the low scoring content. So it's all listed. And you can see quite quickly, you can go through and see what you need to, to change in order to improve the accessibility score. But overall, you can get a list of everything on the Moodle site. You can list by issue uh, or severity as well. So it's, it's and there's all of the content. So you can go through each of them. I, oh, 100%. See, it's probably not the best course to, to demonstrate on. I, but there's the one that's basically a scanned document. In fact, it's a screenshot hidden, uh, saved as a PDF. And you can see the ally is actually seeing this and it's interpreting it as a PDF scanned. And what that means is that it's just one big image with no meaningful text, screen readers can't access it, and it's telling us how to fix it. And in this case, there's a, an extra step in that, I, do you have the original document? Yes or no. If you do have the original document, then you can work on the original document and automatically upload it I, to fix the issue. I, if you don't have the original document, then it suggests that you content the contact the library. So a lot of the scanned documents across the Moodle sites are actually scanned chapters of books and things like that. Obviously within the CLA licensing I, regulations, but sometimes these are on Moodle sites and they get picked up as scanned documents. All right. So, as I say, the other issues mentioned folders within subfolders. So if you look at the folders here, if you give it a wee moment, it comes up with the accessibility scores. If we move to the folder with subfolders in it, I, it doesn't give you any accessibility information at all. So this level of organisation, we're going to have to try and dissuade staff to do that. All right. Okay. I think that is about me. I... <laughs> okay, Leslie. No, no I, 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 I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure we have lots of questions. Yeah, I forgot the question you asked me earlier. I was to do with Moodle Books. So let's have a look at the Moodle Book. No, that's, there we go. So here we've got a PowerPoint file embedded within a Moodle Book and you can see Ally is picking up uh, the resource within the Moodle Book and is giving that resource an accessibility score and we can then download that item in whichever format we want to download it. 
So that's, I suppose, is the other option is as well, if I quickly switch my role to student I, and have a look at the resources, you can see that the accessibility score from the student's point of view is not there, but we can access and download the resources in alternative formats. Right, I think that's as much as we've learned so far in this past week. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Leslie, um, before others uh, start asking questions, is there anything that you've found in this first week that is missing from the functionality within Ally? Is there any, other than the, yeah. the one or two issues that you've sort of highlighted, is yeah. there anything that you would like to be able to do but can't do currently? I, to be honest, I haven't really had the time so far to investigate extensively. One of the things that was mentioned uh, offline there was a video. I haven't had time to check video on Moodle, on Moodle sites and check that I, it is meeting the, the web content accessibility guidelines. I, so, yeah. That, I think, will be my next investigation. V video is difficult because you do yeah. have, under the regulations, two weeks to actually add captions. So it's yeah. technically mm -hmm. um, acceptable to have mm -hmm. uh, recorded video up there. But what I'm not sure is what is the process Ally uses to actually determine whether there's captions uh, uh. embedded in the video or otherwise. Uh, we use Echo 360 and I and do have one here. Whoop, wrong one. You're a student uh, just now? No, or, I'm or back, to, back, back to. to being myself. I in Echo 360 been looking at embedding Echo 360 videos within Moodle Book. And you can see that the transcript is available below, but as I said, there's, there's no, it's not, Ally isn't highlighting any accessibility yes. scoring icons associated with this. I think so, that's because it's an embedded third party yeah. tool. Mm -hmm. So it probably handles that slightly differently. Okay, so we do have um, a couple of minutes by my reckoning uh, for some questions during this portion of the session. Does anyone have any questions? I mean, I, I, I had originally put into the chat, I was wondering about the, the visibility of the accessibility scores to students. Yeah. But one of the other things I, I wanted to ask was what, I was intrigued that you could actually disable some of the alternative formats mm -hmm. for some of the content. Um, and I'm intrigued as to what kind of situations would you want to disable alternative formats? I was trying to imagine those myself, but I couldn't come up yeah, with them. Yeah, I... To be honest, I find it difficult to imagine the situations. Some staff can be quite protective over some course materials. I, and I think they may put things like exemplars for essay questions or exam questions that they may wish to have a little bit more control over. I, but as we all know, that doesn't really quite work in practice because where there's a will to copy, it can be done. I, so, yeah, I, I've, I fail to see a, a proper reason I, to disable the alternative formats. Okay. Um, I see Laura Hutton has put in a question. You can unmute yourself, Laura, and, and ask yourself if you like. Hi, um, I was just going to ask, or I have asked, do you think that um, so far with your use of it that you feel it's been good value for money? I... Because it always comes down to cost yeah. it for, a, a, for a lot of institutions and so... That, that's right. I, I think actually time will tell. I think it's looking good value for money so far. I 
I mean, as you saw out of those 47 courses that I've just briefly surveyed, they're semester one courses and it represents probably only about a third of the Moodle sites that we have within our school. So across the university, I, there exists on Moodle an awful lot of materials and I think the benefits of using Ally is the, for those existing materials that are used year in, year out, I, it will help staff and guide staff I, to try and to improve the accessibility of their sites. I would imagine that because there is also the institutional reporting, at some point the university will produce reports which are sent to heads of colleges, which are then cascaded down to heads of school, which are then cascaded down to, to staff to get our house in order. So yeah, I, I think it will prove to be a value for money a, in the long term. And that's a positive message to end this uh, recorded part of the uh, session on. Um, thanks, Leslie. Thanks for your insights. Thanks for your honest opinions um, about Blackboard Alley. That was really, really um, useful, especially for me, who's who's just started looking at this technology now. But um, yes, for, for you, those of you watching on YouTube, this is the end of our recorded part of the session. Hopefully, you'll be able to join us for a future live session on virtual bridges. <laughs> but thanks for attending. And until then, stay safe.